This is Geometry Lesson 910, Surface Areas of Pyramids and Cones. In 9.9 we discussed surface area and lateral area of prisms and cylinders and we talked about how the surface area is made up of the sum of the lateral area plus the area of the two bases. And we had a nice simple formula for that lateral area plus 2b. It's very similar with pyramids and cones. We have a, a formula for surface area, which is once again lateral area plus, but this time the area of the base. But when we look at cone or pyramids and cones, it's a little bit more complicated than it is with prisms and cylinders. If our figure is oblique, we have to take and find the area of each individual lateral face, add them up to get the combine lateral area and then we can find the area of the base to get the surface area. So the formula is very simple but if the figure is not regular then our um, process is a little bit more complicated in that we have to find the area of each individual lateral face. So in this lesson we're going to spend a lot of time discussing formulas for the area of of regular pyramids. When we look at lateral area formulas for pyramids and cones, we have to look at it in terms of regular pyramids or right cones. If we if their figure is regular, then we can use the formula one half times the slant height times the perimeter of the base. And then we can go ahead and put that into our surface area formula and then add the base. So we're going to start out, we're going to do three examples in this video. The first one is just taking a look at a cone. It's a right cone, has a diameter D, and we want to find an expression for the lateral area of a cone in terms of the radius of its base and its slant height. So remember, lateral area is equal to one-half the slant height times the perimeter. So our slant height, they told us, was L, and we have a radius of R. So we need to look at all the variables that need to go in here. So I need L, and that was just equal to L. And the perimeter, remember, perimeter of a circle is really circumference, and that's D times pi. But we're given a radius, so we're going to make that 2 times R times pi. Okay, so now we can go ahead and plug that in. So lateral area equals 1 half times L times P. So that would be 1 half times L times 2 R pi. Now we know that a half times 2 makes 1, so the lateral area then of this cone is going to be pi L R. Our next example involves a, a very large pyramid. It's the red pyramid. It's the third largest Egyptian pyramid. It's a regular square pyramid that's 104 meters high. Each side of its base measures 220 meters, and it is considered to be the first true smooth-sided pyramid. And we're going to try and estimate our surface area. And when I say estimate, I mean we're going to make some, we're going to do some rounding in here when it comes to dealing with pi and um, with our lateral, when we come to our slant height, we're going to have to do a little bit of rounding there as well. So that's what I mean by estimate. So when we start out, just like we did with prisms and cylinders, I'm going to look at what I need for my formula. I need a, an L and I need a P. So for P, perimeter of my base, we have four sides. It's a square and they're all 220, so that's going to be 220 times 4. So that will give me 880 meters. The slant height, though, is going to be a little bit more difficult. It's just not a nice, easy multiplication problem. We know that we have a little bit of a, we have a right triangle in here, so we can use Pythagorean's theorem. Now, the side of my tri um, base here is 220, and this height is dropping to the center 
of my square. So I'm going from the center to the outside. So that distance is 110, 220 divided by 2. So what we need to do is find the hypotenuse of that so that we can get our slant height. So we know that we can use, do the square root and find um, 110 squared plus 104 squared. We do that calculation. I'm going to make an approximation here. I'm not going to leave it in radical form. So I'm going to have 151.38. So now I have in all the values that I need in order to find the lateral area. So I'm going to plug that in to 1 half times the slant height, which is 151.38, times the perimeter, which is 880. So when I do that calculation, then, I get my lateral area to be 66,607.3 meters. So now when I go to, to really try and answer the surface area question, I have my lateral area. I, have the, um, I still need the area of my base. So the area of my base is going to be 220 squared. Let me put my lateral area back up here. So that 220 squared equals 48,400. Now I have enough information, all my values found, so I can go ahead and plug it into my equation. 66,607.3 plus 48,400. So that gives me a surface area of approximately 115,007 meters. squared. The last problem we're going to do together is to find the lateral area and surface area of a cone that's given to us at the right. Now we know the formula for lateral area and surface area is 1 half times L times P and the surface area is the lateral area plus the area of the base. So I have it set up here so we can find all the missing pieces. However, in this cone we have a lot of things that we're going to need to find. First of all, this is a 45 degree angle, a 90 degree angle, so I know that this is 45. So that brings us into our special right triangles that we discussed in Chapter 8. We know that if this is 18, that's the hypotenuse and that's the same as the x root 2. So if 18 is equal to x root 2, then we know that we can solve for x by dividing by root 2, which would give me 9 root 2. So that means the height of my cone is 9 root 2, and the radius of my cone is also 9 root 2. So now I can go ahead and plug in some values and start calculating perimeters and areas of bases and so on. So my lateral, or I'm sorry, my slant height is 18. My perimeter, once again, is the same as circumference because I'm dealing with a base that's a circle. So that's 2 times the 9 root 2 times pi. So that equals 18 root 2 times pi. And then the area of the base is going to be my radius squared, which is 9 root 2 squared times pi, which gives me 162 pi. And I'm going to leave this um, pi attached. I'm going to leave everything in radical form and in the pi attached until the very end. And then I'll do a rounded answer as well as an exact answer. So now I have enough to plug into my formula. I know 1 half times my slant height, which is 18. I'm sorry, uh, yep, 18. And my perimeter is 18 root 2 times pi. Now when I simplify that, I get 1 half times 18 times 18, which gives me 162 times pi. So that gives me my, whoops, that 
there my pen works again, 118 times pi times root 2. That's my lateral area. Now I need to find my surface area by taking my lateral area and adding the area of my base. So that's going to give me 162 pi root 2 plus the area of my base, which is 162 pi. It's kind of a complicated answer, isn't it? But if we go ahead and put that in an approximate form, multiply that out, we get an approximate value of 1,228.5 er, and that would be inches squared. When working with surface area lateral area formulas, either if with prisms and with cylinders, we often keep everything the pi and any radicals until the very end and then if we need an estimate then we can go ahead and calculate it and get an approximate value. But you will see more and more as you progress through this course and into advanced algebra that you will be leaving your answers in terms of pi and in radical form. This concludes lesson 910.